It is a day of stalled diplomacy and more deadly fighting in Ukraine. Talks in Turkey between Russia and Ukraine produced no results, while outrage over the Russian bombing of a maternity hospital in southeastern Ukraine grows. Separately, Russia is proposing humanitarian corridors for civilians to leave major cities, including Kyiv. But those promises have lately been followed by air and artillery strikes. Meantime, Ukrainian officials estimate that in just two weeks of war, $100 billion of damage has been inflicted on the nation. On the economic front in Russia, more companies suspended operations with the country, and European Union leaders agreed to phase out purchases of Russian oil, coal, and gas. This as China, which has quietly supported Russia, said that it would abide by sanctions against Russia that prohibit sales of airplane parts. But again tonight, we begin with a human toll. Nick Schifrin reports from Ukraine. And a warning, some of the images in this story may be disturbing. All that's left of Mariupol is the shell of a city. Nine days of bombardment have left universities, homes, reduced to debris and dust. It is a campaign designed to break people's spirit. And today, they are terrified of how it could get even worse. There are some rescues, but others remain trapped. Life in this city now all but extinguished. I don't have a home anymore. That's why I'm moving. Why else should I be walking? The cameraman asks, where was his home? It doesn't exist anymore. It was hit by a mortar. Alexander Ivanov heads off with nowhere to go. And there is little dignity for the dead. An old cemetery becomes a mass grave. Morgues are already full. 1,200 people have been killed in the city in nine days. For exhausted grave diggers, the work is endless. This is a city that increasingly belongs to the dead. The only thing I want is for this to be finished. I don't know who's guilty, who's right, who started this. Damn them all, those people who started this. What do I feel? I have to live on. The 400,000 people still living in Mariupol remain trapped without food, water, electricity. For the fifth straight day, buses arrived empty to evacuate people through a humanitarian corridor. And for the fifth straight day, they left empty because of Russian shelling. Following the highest level diplomatic meeting since the invasion, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov warned the offensive in Mariupol would continue until Ukraine surrendered, which Kyiv says it has no intention of doing. Everybody hates them and then wishes them to go to hell as soon as possible. Petro Kotin is the acting president of the state nuclear authority Energo Atom. He says the Russian troops who took over the Zaporizhia nuclear plant last week are using it as a shield. Nobody will, will shell uh, on them while they are on territory of nuclear power plant. So they are protected. Plant workers took photos of the aftermath of a fight and of a Russian military vehicle parked outside. During the attack, Zaporizhia officials pleaded with the Russians to stop. Today, the staff is taking orders from a Russian military commander who knows nothing about nuclear power. They actually terrorizing uh, our staff. The occupiers saying uh, you can leave uh, whenever you want, but without replacement, of course, nobody will leave because personnel understands uh, their responsibility. Russian troops also control the Chernobyl nuclear zone, the site of the world's worst nuclear disaster. Today, it's disconnected from the electricity grid. Kotin says it must be restored within three weeks. After that, the temperature will rise because there is no cooling. And finally, it will go to, to very high levels. And after that, uh, the radiation, actually release of radioactivity could, could happen. And so you're calling for a, a corridor, a humanitarian corridor, to allow workers into Chernobyl, right? There are cases that uh, when they actually agreed to give this corridor, and after personnel came there just uh, just for maintenance, they just uh, trying to, to, to kill this personnel. So a senior U.S. defense official said today Russian troops near Kyiv, after days of not moving, are advancing toward the city. Russia continues to control territory in the north, northeast and south, surrounds five cities, and is increasing its assault on the port city of Mykolaiv. Kyiv says the only way to stop Russia is a no-fly zone.
But in Poland, the U.S. continues to block a fighter jet transfer to Ukraine. Today, Vice President Kamala Harris and Polish President Andrzej Duda tried to show unity, and Harris joined growing calls for an investigation into Russian war crimes. We have been witnessing for weeks, and certainly just in the last 24 hours, atrocities of unimaginable proportion. The bombardment has led to an exodus, especially from the capital, Kyiv. Once a thriving metropolis, now a capital deserted. The mayor said today nearly two million, half the city, has fled. Aid for the displaced has arrived from all over the world through this hub in Lviv. Trucks full of donations and an army of volunteers forming assembly lines since three hours after the first missile struck. Every donation they receive, every box they transfer, they believe contributes to victory. This used to be an art center, and this stage is full of people who, in their time, play many parts. Here we have different type of food. Like 39-year-old Yuri Popovich, who gave me a tour. I don't think I would be able to take a gun and shoot. So I, th I, 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 I thought that I will find a place or some service where I can be helpful with my experience, with my skills and, and things like that. For me, I decided that this is going to be my fight because I, I can do this. Popovich grew up wanting to become a Greek Catholic priest. That's him on the left in seminary in Italy. Back in Ukraine, he worked in tourism, publishing, and started a software development company. This is all the medicine. Today, he works 16 hours a day here, in the basement of fully stocked pharmacy created in two weeks. What we do need a lot, wartime medicines. We get a lot of requests to supply our militaries with a different type of medicine. This looks like uh, an auditorium. Yeah, it is. Upstairs, a room full of donated clothes. Who's financing all of this? No one. This is completely done by volunteers and with volunteers. And downstairs, food destined to besiege Ukrainians around the country. These are for soldiers who are actually fighting. In each handmade pack created for frontline troops, from a children's letter. And this one specifically represents Ukrainian army. Go ahead, win. Glory to Ukraine. And the sun is smiling, so there is a hope. Children still hopeful, but expressing sentiments of war. When I think about all the uh, lives, all the scars uh, on people's lives, on people's souls, it's, it's, it's really break, heartbreaking. We want peace in our country. We don't want our children to make war drawings. We want them to play soccer. We want them to, to run around on the grass. Yeah. Sorry, I get very upset when I speak about this. Because why? What did we do? What, how did we deserve? Like so many Ukrainians asking, what did they do to deserve this? In Mariupol today, a resident put it this way, there is no way to get any humanitarian aid into the city, and there is no way to get any residents out of the city. Zelensky said today that Russian troops shelled the very building where residents in Mariupol were supposed to gather in order to evacuate. And the fear is that those conditions could be repeated around the country soon. Judy, tonight, the mayor of Chernihiv near the Belarus border warned that they had so many fatalities, that city, too, was running out of burial space. So distressing. So, Nick, you showed how the humanitarian corridor there into Mariupol had failed. What do you know, uh, what is known about ceasefires in, in other cities around the country? Tonight, Zelensky said that Russians had held fire long enough in seven cities uh, over the last couple days so that 100,000 people could evacuate from those cities in the last 48 hours. Now, that is much higher than it was just a couple days ago. But just again, to give some perspective, there are hundreds of thousands of people trapped in Mariupol alone. There are hundreds of thousands of people trapped in other cities by Russian forces. And these people are trapped in dire conditions. They don't even have the basics in which they can live. Zelensky told Vice News last night that dialogue with Putin directly is the only way to end the war. But senior U.S. officials I talk to don't see an off-ramp right now to this war. French President Emmanuel Macron said today that he does not see any diplomatic solution to the war. So the fear is, Judy, that soon there will be more days like today. Just incredibly discouraging. Nick Schifrin uh, reporting for us from Ukraine. Thank you, Nick.